Howdy viewers and welcome to the Game Face Footy Show for the Southern Football Netball League Division 1. My name's Russell Roberts and I'll be your host here live in Studio A at Game Face HQ. I'm joined on this very worthy panel by Will Hunter. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Yourself? I'm not too bad, mate. Ben Lockwood, how are you, mate? Very good, mate. Better than you, apparently. Yes. Off on the head yeah. Saturday. I got... Uh, got Unfortunately, knocked out. So if I make mistakes on the show today, I'm going to use that as an absolute excuse because, uh, look, it was a hard-hitting game and the yeah, fella only got one week for it. I thought it would deserve six. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking. It was an accident. Boys, uh, some top stories for you to get through uh, in the show today. Morty Alex stunned by Oakley Districts. Can't wait to get into that one because that is an upset to end all upsets. The Dingoes and the Cheltenham uh, Club flex their muscle. And the Interleague uh, squad announced we'll rip through all of those. But first, boys, let's move to that match of the round. Morty Alex, stunned by Oakley Districts. Lockers, talk to me. Yeah, unreal. Wouldn't have picked it. You know, Oakley struggled to start it here. Got really badly beaten up by Bentley the week before. Morty Alec on top of the ladder. Uh, and yeah, just kept watching the results come through on the game face app. And, you know, 10 points down, 14 points down. Got worse and worse. And Link, uh, Oakley ended up winning by 32 points, so it was a great, huge win for them. Absolutely Wins. staggering. Fair Dinkin would not have picked that in a fit. I mean, we said um, at the start of the season that Morty Alec would have been one of the sides to beat in this Division 1 competition. Um, Oakley District, we tipped to finish sort of towards the other end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, yeah, Oakley District kicking 10 goals to two after half-time to run out comfortable winners. Because Morty Alec, they flew out the block, so they got, uh, they got the jump on them early. But Fair Dinkin, 10 goals to two after half-time, and only one behind a Morty Alec in that last quarter. Um, that's that's an effort that leaves a lot to be desired, and no doubt Mick Brown would be pretty annoyed with that performance. Look, because sometimes have look at training. Yeah, look, yeah, right, no doubt. Uh, they'll be running four hundreds. I would yeah, have thought. Right. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. Sometimes there's mitigating circumstances. There's injuries. Uh, blokes go away for weddings in Bali. You know, absolutely. you hear that a lot with local football. Was there any of that sort of stuff going down? Look, they had a couple out. I wouldn't say they were decimated by any stretch. No. Really. They, they had basically a full complement. I know Danny Nichols, ex Collingwood player, played in the twos, but he actually hasn't played all year. So you can't say here they were missing him. He just wasn't available. Um, I'd say he'll be back in this week, though. No matter what, mm -hmm. yeah, training on uh, Tuesday night will definitely be interesting. From what I understand, it was more a case of just a lack of lack of effort, lack of intensity, and a lack of discipline. So um, hard to really coach that. It is sometimes like that, and you look at, oh no, I won't go to the AFL because we all see that, and the Melbourne Football Club, you look like they're inside their own heads at the moment, and that can happen absolutely everywhere. You, you, you'd imagine that Morty are sort of going after half time, oh, we can't wrestle this back, what's going on? Oakley grew another leg. It must have been that sort of stuff going on. Yeah, absolutely. It's a mental game. 100% it is, 100%. You know, and Oakley had Jake Mullen played his first game of the year, and look, he's an important player, he's a fantastic player, but it's only one player, so... Yeah, back to the drawing board for Morty. They'll bounce back. Then. No doubt. Now we'll move on now to the match of the day. That we were saying that was the match of the day. It was the upset of probably the year so far. But this indeed was the match of the day. East Melbourne defeating the Port Colts, 18-7-1-15 to 12-11-83. Boys, uh, review it for me, would you? You were down there on yeah, the day, Lockers. I went and had a look. East Melbourne opened their new rooms. Uh, fairly palatial too, I might add. But um, yeah, good game of footy. You know, 30 goals kicking a, a game in the parks. Pretty good. Good standard. Um, East Melbourne's skills were really impressive by foot and uh, I actually listened to Lindsay Gilby at quarter time and he was quite happy with Port Colts' opportunities they were getting forward. Uh, they probably didn't make the most of them, you know, 12 goals, 11, a little bit inaccurate, but it was really his, his room for improvement he was really focusing on was making sure Port defended a little bit better, especially those little short 45s and yeah, East Melbourne were, were pretty impressive. Um, they needed it though, that was, that was if and two. And the pressure was going to come if they didn't win. So, yeah, good result. Probably um, scores probably flattered Port Colts a little bit in the end. They kicked a couple of goals really late. Mm. Um, I think they kicked four of the last five goals to, to sort of make the scoreboard look a little bit more respectable. But, yeah, um, good game footy. I can recall, I think Dalla Libera, the big ruckman from Port Colts, missed through suspension. He had a rest. Uh, yep. And, uh, yeah, Chris Carey um, just dominated in his absence, didn't he? Chris Carey probably had 80 hit outs for the day. Absolutely Gosh. dominated. Uh, took marks around the ground. Really, look, he looked switched on. Um, apparently, the week before against St Kilda City wasn't one of his better efforts. Mm. He's the premier big man in the competition, and, and definitely on Saturday he proved, you know, that undoubtedly that he's still going to be a, a man mountain and tough to beat throughout the year. How important is a ruckman to a team? I mean, you, it's got to be said. As much as we like to take the mick out of a ruckman, doesn't play on anyone, can do whatever they want out there. But giving first use at the stoppage. Yeah. They are worth their weight in gold, and if you were a smart man, you'd put together a bit of a Ruckman Academy and have them all signed up as a manager from the start, That's wouldn't right. you? Exactly right. If you go back to the AFL last year and you have a look at guys like uh, 
Maxi Dorn and yeah. Brody Grundy and the impact they have both in the air and around the ground, yeah. they're, they're, they're vital. Yeah, Absolutely. Port, Port Colts actually rode to Chris Carey fairly well. Um, Chris DeLuca actually started leading off the hand, which is good for me for interleague in a few weeks. Yes. Chris might find his way in there, but um, yeah, they, they were still okay. They pretty broke even at stoppage as Port Colts. It was just when the ball got on the outside. Certainly important to have a couple of tricks in your kit bag if you've got a dominant ruckman. If they start sharking taps, be able to do that. Sounds like that was the case. Some other results for you. Cheltenham uh, defeated Bentley uh, 21-8, 134-6440 to on the Anzac Day clash. St Paul's defeated St Kilda uh, convincingly, 94-49 to there. And Dingley, as we said off the top of the show, flexing their veritable muscles at the moment, 114, defeating height. Only two goals, 12-24, very low scoring there. Our man Will ventured on down to Dingley to ch chat to uh, the defender there, Kristen Fan. Let's check out that interview now. All righty, guys. So an impressive 90-point win to the Dingoes over height this afternoon. And I'm joined by uh, one of the stars of this Dingoes side, Kristen Fan. Pup, you've been in the wars, mate. What's happened? Yeah, a bit of friendly fire just in the last quarter there. But, um, yeah, it's all good. Just a little cut. Should be all right. No, you'll be fine. Um, how's the body pulled up otherwise? Is it a hard fought game? Yeah, it was pretty pretty hard, but um, yeah, I'm alright, feel alright, besides a little cut. Mate, you blokes, absolutely flying at the moment, top of the ladder, only undefeated side and a big win here today. Um, you blokes must be in pretty good spirits, I, I would have thought. Yeah, it's a good feeling around the club at the moment, good energy and um, to be 3-0, it's good, yeah, there's good buzz. How'd you get the job done here today? Kick some goals. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know, we just stick to our structures. Um, which we've been doing all year and it's paying off and there's a few good boys in good form so and yeah it's paying off. And how'd you go today? Get a few kicks? Oh a couple, nothing special mate. Just just spoil, that's it. Just uh, getting it done down back? Yeah, oh not just me mate, we're we're all playing pretty good footy down there, as well as the midfielders and everyone, so it's good. So plenty of excitement with the dingoes at the moment as as we said. So uh, big game coming up, East Melvin, big test for you. Yeah, it's gonna be huge. Um, down at Dingley, so we're, we're prepping for it, we're looking forward to it. Um, yeah, hopefully get the win. Confident heading into it? Yeah, always confident, but yeah, we'll see. No, very good. Thanks for joining me, mate, and uh, best of luck for uh, next week and the rest of the year, mate. Thanks, Will. What a fantastic team the Dingley Dingoes are, Will. Great job, mate. Yeah, cheers, mate, and uh, good on uh, Pup Fan for having a chat. He caught a bit of friendly fire late in that game and come off the ground with a blood rule. There was a bit of claret everywhere, but uh, no, he was a good player on the on the day. He's certainly a player to watch in Dingley. Bloody hell, they were uh, making every post to win it. The only undefeated side left in the comp, and uh, they're flying, mate. Most important thing, mate, how did Chris Horton Milne go? He was, man. He was, uh, he was pretty good. He's uh, excellent. Sean Moy should have been in that, uh, that top 35. Yeah. Speaking of that, top <laughs> players, let's move now into uh, lockers and big deal. The interleague squad, because Southern football is pretty strong at the moment and you've got uh, some pretty good players to choose from there Lockers. let's start talking through this some key players uh, where you'll be training and the date go for it mate right game 18th of May uh, unfortunately playing away again Romsey so that's okay we'll get in the bus and go up there maybe it was a bus trip last year Lockers. Uh, <laughs> yeah that was that was probably we'll put a segment a whole yeah, segment together we for that. that we actually got some video of that still from last year um, <laughs> hope that doesn't see the light today <laughs> we start training uh, for your sake Will that's right uh, we start training this Wednesday uh, the first two Wednesday nights are um, out at Springvale unfortunately uh, Morabin's not available until the following Tuesday Thursday game week so Train out springy, great surface, so we'll, we'll get out there and, and have a look at everyone. Um, key players, it's a Division 1 guys only this year, which is, it's a little bit, it'd be great to have some Division 2 and 3 guys in. There's definitely guys good enough, as you know, Robbo, mm. but um, they've unfortunately got to play that weekend. Key players, Danny Aids, again, will play a big role. Um, you know, assistant coach at Dingley, he was captain last year. Um, Chris Carey was spoken about um, in the ruck. He might have his uh, partner in crime from Port Colts back from suspension with him there as well. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be a pretty strong side. And, and most guys are pretty keen at the stage. So, yeah, looking forward to it. How's my man? What's he looking? Uh, is he in your, is he in your I, sights? Unlike you, uh, Will, I actually put him in the squad. So, he's every chance to play. <laughs> <laughs> just bloke throws me under the bus every oh, opportunity. Man. He gets fed in. Yeah, I'm just trying to... Trying to keep on side of the dingoes because uh, I don't want Shane ringing me, Shane Moore, the coach, telling me I can't pick any of your players. So just keep on their good side. No, their we, good can't side. Have, we, we had the death of state of origin. We can't have nah, the like, blokes pulling out. We need uh, our southern football uh, looking strong. And, and let's talk, speak about that. How do you reckon we're going to go against the opposition? Um, look, we've, we're coming off three really successful campaigns. So um, the, the, the buying from players has been fantastic the last three years and it's only getting stronger. 
Um, I think every guy that actually played in the last year or the previous year has put their hand up to come back. So, yeah, you know, I think we'll recruit ourselves really well. We, we really base ourselves on our run and spread and, and speed and, and try and play exciting footy for anyone that comes to watch. So good on your lockers. Could be early, sorry mate, just could be early days. But is there anyone that said they're unavailable for uh, inter league selection? I know that's been a bugbear of yours over the last few years. Been a bugbear. Uh, there's a couple of rumours afloat of, of guys that have all of a sudden got injured after round three, but we'll just see how we go. Don't you uh, hate it when that happens? <laughs> look, it happens, you just got to deal with it and move on. End of the day, though, if they don't want to be there, don't pick them. That's right, absolutely. Um, well, we wish you all the best uh, in your campaign. You'll obviously need some goal kickers. Will, I'm going to get you uh, now to run through the leading goal kickers over the weekend from the Southern Football Netball League. Go for it, mate. Well, a uh, big win for Cheltenham, Will McTaggart, uh, chief among them with uh, seven snags there. Uh, Dave Vellato, Dan Farmer, four each in uh, Oakley and Dingley's wins there. And Sammy McGregor, Harrison Hunt, Xavier Linton and Justin Madden with three apiece. Good stuff. Let's move now to Division 1 Team of the Week. You boys have poured through it. Who have you picked out for us, boys? Go for it. Backline to the interchange. Alrighty, so uh, we'll start with the backline. Nick Barry, East Melbourne, John Walker, Oakley District and uh, Matty, War- M- Matty Morwood. Struggle to get that one out in the uh, back pocket. Eminem. Who comes back in? Eminem. Eminem. Yeah. Uh, Halfback Dan Vaughan, uh, your man. I know you're a massive fan from Cheltenham. Uh, Alex Spencer and your phone. Uh, your watch, watch, mate. Watch. Yeah. My heart rate. My heart rate's going through the roof. <laughs> talking about these players. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Exciting. I love it. Alex Spencer at uh, centre halfback and Lukey Barnhorn keeps his spot on the. Uh, Three weeks in a row. Yeah, for Luke. He's. Uh, they didn't have a great day um, at the office, Morty Alec, but he's a. Uh, He's a star, that's for sure. Anyone want to run through the mids there, Lockers? Uh, yep, Jackson Barclay uh, on the wing, Luke Duffy in the centre. I think it's the second time we've seen him and uh, and, and Lucas Wamsley, I think, was voted the, the third best player in the comp by you, Will. Uh, played really well. Half forward, Jimmy Zilla back from Sandringham, so he played really well. Half forward on ball. Uh, saw this guy again on Saturday McK- uh, Mackenzie Twisto, so now forward for East Melbourne, very, very good. Uh, he can play, that man. He can play, he's got a good set of wheels, good set of hands. Um, Harrison Hunt, very similar player actually, first uh, year back at St Paul's. Full forward line, we couldn't leave big Will McTaggart out, he had to be seven, he actually kicked five and a quarter, I think, wow. second quarter. Really uh, lit, lit Cheltenham Parker light. Um, Daniel Farmer was his turn, I think with uh, Dingley, they've got a pretty good forward line, pretty potent. And uh, yeah, Dave Villado, very good skills, left footer, can kick a goal. Over to you, mate. And the uh, the big ruckman, as we spoke about, Chris Carey, comes back in, uh, was replaced last week by uh, Dalla Libera, but he's uh, stamped his authority on that game and gets back in. Uh, Danny Ades as well had a, had a great game all around the park. And uh, J- young Jack Carousella, the uh, coach's son down there at Oakley District, um, gets a gig as well. And on the interchange, Josh Ferguson had a good game. Uh, as well as Lucas Wamsley. Um, they, they look the same, the two dreadlock wingers down there. They at, do look uh, a little bit there. similar. Uh, Jack Davis from Cheltenham. Nick Perry, my man there, St Kilda City. Uh, young captain at 22, I think. Yeah. So, fantastic. Good to see him doing well. Good on you, Nick. Keep up the uh, good work there, son. And uh, Chris DeLuca from Port Melbourne Colts. Geez, he's a player, isn't he? Very good. Runs hard. Runs hard at the footy. Runs hard at the paint. Really good player. Well done, boys. Fantastic effort. And uh, I'm sure a lot of guys tune in to see who makes that team of the week. And I'm sure you cop a little bit of flack when you don't put in uh, some of the good performances. Now, we have a lot of fun here at uh, Game Face HQ. And we were pouring over some of the vision and some of the feedback from the previous weeks of football. And Will, you've been handed something uh, via text. Uh, a coach giving players a spray. Always love to hear a coach giving a spray. We love it, don't we? You can pour over YouTube and find a couple. Absolutely. But there's a new one, Will. Absolutely. Yeah. There was one that went viral during the week, boys. I'm sure you would have seen it with our, uh, our man, Rocket Eat. Um, one from 10 years ago in the coach's box. I I lost count how many times I watched that, and I pissed myself all week watching it. It was simply <laughs> magnificent. If you haven't seen it, Nuffy's on the AFL page. This is one of the uh, best Facebook pages going around, so check that out. What's that, that again? Nuffy's on AFL pages. Nuffy's on AFL pages. Check it out. Hilarious. That's where you see that Rocket E video. It's one of the all-time great videos. Just given up. Will Minson some choice words in the in the coach's Big box, say. Big <laughs> Will. Nice. Poor old Will, he's an easy target. <laughs> the smartest, uh, the, the, the smartest, smartest star match, something can. like that, yeah. yeah. You, uh, you would have been on the end of a couple of sprays back in your time, would you? Oh, remember? absolutely. And, and look, Loggers and I came through football at a time where it was okay to was cop a spray. And you just copped it, you know. It's just the way it was back then. You really sort of just brushed it off. 
couldn't get away with it these days, what I cop. But, uh, you know, when you play under Neil Danaher and his nickname's Rowdy uh, for a reason, the first game I played under Rowdy was down in New Zealand. We're playing the Sydney Swans, OK? It was what, I think it might have been the Anset Cup. That's how wow. long ago we're talking here. But we're playing in uh, foreign soil uh, down in New Zealand. And we didn't know what we were expecting here. We've got the new coach. What's it going to be like? Um, he'd been fantastic all pre-season. We've gone out there and uh, Sydney first half were pretty good. Um, we, were, we weren't far behind. We thought we were okay. But Nita and Jeff Farmer hadn't um, troubled the scorers yet. We walked into the halftime change room and Neil's walked in and just given one of the biggest sprays you've ever seen to <laughs> David Neitz and Jeff Farmer. Now, these guys are superstars. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, next. they're copping that. <laughs> what am I going to cop? Because I'm just a nobody. And he's walked in, he's gone, Nita! Nita! Take an effing mark, Nita! <laughs> About five times he said it. Smitty's been on for one minute and he took a mark! And he said the same thing to Wiz. And then after that, about saying Wizard's name seven times. Wizard! You're going all right, mate. You're going all right. Righto. And then he realised at that time he just lost his voice. Something clicked and he couldn't coach the rest of the game. Chris Fagan had to come and uh, <laughs> coach the rest of the game because he broke his voice box. After the game, he didn't say a damn word. Really? That was number one. Then I copped one down in Geelong with Nita again. Poor old Nita. He Nita. was always on the end because he's big. The big guys big. cop it. Can't, can't yeah, miss him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we were at... Um, I think it was Shell Stadium back then or down in Geelong and it's always a long trip back down the Any highway if you yeah. play badly down there and Nita never really had great days on Scarlo for good reason <laughs> yeah, good he reason. was a good player Absolutely. didn't get a kick uh, I kicked one and we just were blamed for the loss of the game and some really choice four letter words were uh, pointed at Nita and myself Nita the captain stood up mid the meeting walked out grabbed his bag and drove home took off <laughs> as you do know, unreal as you do know. ah but you love it Good fun. Yeah, you do. All good fun. Uh, but uh, you did say that um, we did get something sent in, so thank you to uh, Troy Parker from Dingley for sending this one in. Um, Rocket Eden, he denied, flatly denied being the uh, the voice in that uh, in that uh, that video on, on Nuffies. Um, the stitch up, he called it, but uh, he's got form. Uh, and this was him uh, allegedly addressing the uh, the players at Baldwin on Tuesday night. Check this out. Time's a night to react. You bitch on the back. Oh, please. Get comfortable. I won't get pressure in your pockets anymore. You're gonna serve that shit up. Stand it over. No pressure. It's bullshit. Get your. It's all here. You ain't losing, losing, you lose your skill in one night. It's all mental. Well, put that your badge off. We're a good side. We're a good team. We beat South. South Croyd must have. <laughs> Thank you, Troy. A few beeps in there. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. Not sure where, not sure where he got that one from, but uh, yeah, appreciate it. Allegedly, that it's, there's, there's some allegations. We're going to leave it alone. But I'll tell you what, if you've got some sprays like that you're just hiding in your phone and you'd like it to send <laughs> us, we'll proudly put it on the uh, Game Face Footy Show for you. Uh, send your best sprays on the Game Face SFNL uh, group. Let's move on to the upcoming games, boys, because we've got some football to get through. Brought to you by Mel Safe. Morty Alec taking on Cheltenham. I'm going to get some tips as we go through. So let's go with that one. Uh, a bit of a crunch game for Morty Alec. They want to bounce back after their disappointing result against Oakley District last week. Uh, Cheltenham tend to do pretty well against Morty Alec, so this 100%. will be a really, really interesting one. Uh, a toss of the coin for mine, but I might go Morty Alec. I'm Chelt. Saw Chelt, Anzac Day, they are fantastic. So, yeah, that's really good skills. I spread the footy well, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go chow. It'll get me in trouble when I turn up to Morty Alec on Saturday, but I'll, I'll cop that on the chin. Home ground advantage is the only reason why yep. I'm going Morty Alec, but uh, chow, there'll be a goal in it, I reckon, either way. Yeah, good game. Well, I love it when you blokes go one for one, you choose both sides. Uh, St Kilda City versus Oakley Districts, go for it. Uh, a bit of an interesting one as well, I think, Lockers. Uh, districts will be up and about after last week, but... Uh, St Kilda City probably too strong at home for more. I think at home they play that ground really well. It's unique, the peanut farm, and yeah, they'll get the they'll get the money there for sure. 
Port Melbourne are hosting St Paul's. You would have thought St Paul's here, boys? No? Oh, don't no, know? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm a big rap for Port Colts, as you, as you know, Lockers. Um, and on that small ground, I mean, St Paul's love to run and spread and mm -hmm. find a little bit of space. There's not a lot of it down at JL Murphy Reserve, so I reckon the Colts in this one. Have to agree with you, Will. I'm mm -hmm. Colts as well, just that ground. It's so small and, and they've got big bodies. You know, again, I was there Saturday, saw them. They're big and strong and physical and not saying St Paul's aren't a great side because they are, but you know, obviously pick them for the flag. But I think at home they might be a bit strong. They uh, won the flag last year, as you said, and Port Colts finished second last. But if memory serves me correctly, St Paul's got up by one point the corresponding fixture at JL Murphy last year. Late in the year considering too. Considering the, uh, the difference between those two sides where they finished last year. Yep. Awesome Doesn't happen often when Lockers agrees with Will. Move on to the next game. <laughs> Bentley are hosting Hyatt. Go for it. Hyatt. Hyatt, I think. Um, although both sides would want to really improve on um, their efforts from last weekend, I think. I chatted to both coaches. I chatted to Paul Piera on Saturday, the East Melbourne game. Port Colts, and I saw Sammy Hecker umpire and his son on Sunday at the junior footy. How's he running? Um, Sammy's not running real quick at the minute. He's got a bit of a banged up knee, but he, he looked all right. Um, oh, I think Bentley just though, in saying that, just at home, home ground. Yep, no worries. And the last game will be Dingley versus East Melbourne. Oh, this is a good game. Good game. Um, it's a tough round, this one. Yeah, it is. Good footy going to be played. Yeah, it's re really sorting out the uh, men from the boys from a tipping point of view, Lockers. Uh, Dingley looking pretty good. Um, yeah, Dingley at home for mine. They, they were very, very impressive against Hyatt. I will say Dingley to keep on Shane's good side. Um, but only just, and only because it's a home game. But they've traditionally the last couple of years had cracking games out there at Dingley. So you find the political one. game with your tips. Uh, what's that, sorry? You find the political game with your tips. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Correct. Interleague month, mate, so I have to be nice to everyone. You start my water, you make, why don't you tip everyone? No. I'll run for council soon with <laughs> those political tips. Yeah, well done, the boys. Uh, that's been a fantastic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic show. Will, where are you going this weekend, mate? Who are you going to check out? Ooh, I, uh, I'm not sure, mate. I haven't made my mind up yet. There's so many... Uh, throw a dart at it, mate. You can choose. Oh, there's so many good games this week, mate. It's just uh, hard to know where to go. Good on your lockers. You, where are you off to, uh, mate? I'll go to Dingley East Malvern for the first half and then to Morty Alec Cheltenham second half. Fantastic. Don't worry about it. These boys will report back to us next week everything that's happening with the Southern Football Netball League Division 1. Well done, Will. Well done, Lockers. Fantastic having you. Thanks, Robo. See you next week. That's been the Game Face Footy Show for the Southern Football... For the, for the Southern Football <laughs> Netball League. It's been a long day. See you later. <laughs>